Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you're a new subscriber, let me know in the comment section down below how you found me. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for tuning back in to see my face. And it is currently 1 in the morning. I had already previously filmed this video and my cousin was in it. But she had never seen Teen Wolf. So she was kind of just sitting there. And I'm watching this video back and I'm like, I don't want to upload this. I just have this random person that you guys have never met just sitting here saying nothing about the show. Adding no commentary. Like, nothing. And, like, I let her watch trailers, which she didn't even pay attention to. So I was just kind of like, this video was trash. So... I'm re-recording this at 1 in the freaking morning. Also, it was my birthday, March 26th. This is currently being recorded on the 29th. Um, so, yeah, without dragging this on too much, let's get into everything wrong with Teen Wolf, which someone actually requested for my Vampire Diaries video. And I just kind of want to get it out quickly before they kind of, like, forget I exist. So, yeah, let's get into it for real. <laughs> I already finished shooting the video or whatever so sorry for move like I'm a very expressionable person when it comes to using my hands so I use them a lot so I'm sorry like there's like gonna be like you know hearing my hand moving I apologize for that but yeah I also want to give a shout out to Julia Cuddy I hope I said her name right because I also watched her video before I filmed mine and I felt I really like um she kind of refreshed my brain a lot and I kind of like some of the points she used so some of them are in my video so I just want to like you know I never want anybody to like feel like I'm just using their stuff without giving credit I'm gonna always give credit where it's due so shout out to her i've been following her for like two three years now and i love her content so y'all should subscribe to her she probably has like no idea who i am so yeah bye as you guys can tell your girl got herself a little tiny mic but yeah i hope this sound quality is better so i'm not talking so loudly especially when i'm like not home alone i'm not screaming at my phone but yeah let's just go get ahead what get ahead and go ahead and get into the video if you don't know what teen wolf is teen wolf is an american um tv show from the mtv series it aired it had six seasons and um that's pretty much it there's nothing oh yeah it starred tyler posey dylan o'brien holland roden i think that's her name arden show and a whole bunch of other people so yeah um yeah so it went on for six seasons before eventually ending um i honestly did not get into the show until after it finished airing i think i caught it right on the tail end of it airing on season six and my cousin used to watch it all the time but i was like i'm the type of person if everyone else is into it i'm gonna wait till the hype downs dies down so i can have like a clear understanding of do i actually like this or am i just following the hype and i actually did like the show but that doesn't mean it doesn't have its flaws. I love the show, but it does have its flaws. Um, so yeah, before I like get into it, I've been seeing like Tyler Posey and Holland Road and the guy that plays Parrish making videos because fans keep asking for season seven. Let the show rest. It ended where it ended, honestly, and it could have had a lot better ending because, let's be honest, the ending wasn't all that. Season six was kind of a mess, A and B. Like, just leave the show alone. If y'all want to do, like, a whole, like, and MTV's not even interested, so they can't even use, like, the original characters if these people do want to do a reboot, like, because MTV owns the rights to the show, so it wouldn't even be the same. Just let it rest. Let it be what it was. Enjoy it for what it was and what it turned out to be. Like, stop with the shenanigans. Like, y'all have these people, besides, like, I think... Tyler Posey is the only one who's like so desperate for a season seven. Like, let it go, sir. Please let it go. Like, it's in, it's giving embarrassing. I don't I don't like that. Leave off on a good note and leave it like that. Like, let's but let's like you're texting producers and stuff. <sighs> let's move past that. Just stop. Leave the show alone, okay? Leave it in its glory, in its his nostalgia, because it's not going to be the same when it comes back. Okay, let's move on, all right? So the first person I have on my list is Scott. Scott is our main protagonist, who on episode one, season one, is getting bitten by, who is bitten by a wolf after he's sneaking into the woods with his best friend, um, Styles. okay? And I really enjoyed Scott's character. I enjoyed his integrity of, like, not wanting to kill people and stuff like that, because, you know, it was kind of like that. He had other characters to do it. But I am glad that his character did develop like come into this morally gray area like it's okay to kill well it's not okay to kill but like in the name of self-defense it's okay to defend yourself and if death happens to be the outcome 
then so be it. Because this morally high ground he was standing on for the longest to the point that his own best friend could not come to him and be like, I accidentally took a life in the name of trying to defend myself. Did you, you literally. But yeah, but like an issue I had with Scott, although he was like a somewhat decent round, well-rounded character, his obsession with his partners was so weird to me. The fact that. Allison was his anchor when he first became a werewolf and not Styles, his best friend, or maybe his mother, the woman who raised him. The fact that this girl that you just met, that you know you've never really had a real girlfriend, so I can understand the obsession with a girlfriend, but the fact that he was so obsessed, like this girl was his anchor, made no sense to me. The fact that you were willing to die to be with this girl, like when I say willing to die, I literally mean willing to die. Like Allison's father wanted to kill this man because it's like one, you're a werewolf and they don't they, they can't kill you based on their honor code because you haven't personally taken a life and you're a minor but the fact that he told you stop messing with my daughter or i'm gonna kill you and you can't mess with her like look don't get me wrong i understand young love but my life is not worth it see you on the other side sister like it's your your kisses and some sex is not worth dying over i'm sorry no he was like he relied way too much on his relationship like romantic relationships when it's like you had styles and you had your mother like those two people who are there like you've been knowing styles since you were a child like elementary kindergarten okay and your mother who raised you and these people are not your anchors they're not what reels you back in like bro he was way too invested when it came to romantic relationships. A little too much. It became really weird and obsessive. Like, even the fact that when he was messing, when, when um Kira was introduced, and he was still feeling some type of way that Allison was kind of moving on with Isaac. I'm like, bro, you have a whole new shorty. Shorty, like, you got somebody new, and you still worried about what she doing? Mind your business. Like, I guess, I understand y'all still, like, friends, but mind your business, baby. Like, that ain't got nothing to do with you no more. Like okay and then moving on Kira was his best relationship I don't care Scallison fans you can hate me don't get me wrong I loved him and Allison I really did I enjoyed their relationship was really cute it was really endearing like I really love how they was like going to bat for each other like it was cute but I think the main reason I enjoyed Kira's relationship more was simply because of the fact of how Kira reacted when she found out this man was a werewolf it was just cute to me it was just like completely different from how Allison reacted and I know I can't like you know Kira had her own thing going on so it was a little easier for her to like you know understand the whole world werewolf thing but i just felt like it made the relationship so much better okay and kira didn't whine and cry as much as allison don't get me wrong there are people that are just emotional and that's okay but she's not my type of people and kira but they kind of didn't develop kira as much, enough for me but like still i just kind of like enjoyed her a little bit more i kind of like their dynamic a little bit more especially because he wasn't as reliant on kira in a romantic relationship like he really had this like he really was all about her it's like he was not in the same way as Elson, but he wasn't as obsessed with her which is what i appreciate like i'm like you're your own person who just happens to be in a relationship your relationship is not your end all be all and that's what i liked about him and kira like also the reason he took the way he took styles for granted did not sit right with me like styles was always coming up with these plans trying to figure out who it was and no one would ever listen to styles no one would ever listen to my husband okay love you baby no one would ever listen to him and that's the reason why 6b was a mess okay and the fact that honestly i'm gonna be honest with y'all i barely remember 6b i barely remember how the show ended I, I i really i could not tell you how it ended i just remember them all walking off at the end that's it but the fact that him and malia got together your best friend's ex the man he lost his virginity to are you serious right now are you serious you cannot be serious there's no way you're getting together with your best friend's ass. And your whole Malia talking about something. Just look at me. This man has no eyes. How is he looking at you? With what eyes is he looking at you at you with? I am confuffled. Confused. Like, what was the purpose in that? My goodness. What was the purpose in that relationship? Because y'all barely set it up. I think they were supposed to set up in like season 6A, part A, whatever. But it just, it didn't give what it was supposed to give. Like, it wasn't giving. Like, it wasn't doing what it was supposed to do. Like, it was, no let it like ugh. child let's move on 
Next, we have my husband, Styles, who, you know, is played by the magnificent Dylan O'Brien. Oh, I love that man. He was the best actor on that show. He outsold comedic timing, perfect, emotional. Like, you already knew he could do comedic timing. You could already knew he could do the basic level of acting. But season three, when he got to play voice Styles, was when we knew he was going to be the breakout. That was his break. That was his breakout in the stuff. Like, don't get me wrong. He was in some stuff before that. But that was what solidified him as an A-list celebrity. That's what got him the Maze Runner and all that stuff. That's what solidified his places. He's not like these other people. He is booked and busy. The rest of them, I could not tell you. I, I only know that Tyler Posey was on Jane the Virgin. Other than that, I could not tell you what anybody else is doing. I, I'm sorry to break it to you, but like Malia and him, Malia was his best relationship. The fact that their breakup was not even like an actual breakup. It was just kind of like, you know, I killed Donovan. Yeah, I knew you killed Donovan, but I didn't really care. Like I loved you. And it's like the fact that I didn't really like that they had Malia seem like she was still in love with Styles, but like Styles was just like completely over her. This is the girl you lost your virginity to. Someone you invested time in. Somebody who you helped reintegrate into society. Like, don't get me wrong. I am a Stadia shipper. I ship Stadia. I understand the importance of Stadia. Like, they've been building that up since season one, episode one. From their character introductions. But I felt like it was a little too late with Stadia. Like, they didn't do enough for me. Like, y'all kept trying to dangle it in our face. And it never paid off. It never paid off. It never gave what it was supposed to give. Like, at that point, they should have just got Malia and Styles back together and left like that. Because after Malia found out about the whole kill list thing, she kind of like, you know, it was okay, cool. And the whole Chimera thing. And then it was like, it wasn't a real breakup. It was so dumb. It wasn't even a real reason for them to break up. I was just kind of like, what is this? Is this how you're going to do me? The, oh. Like, don't get me wrong. They got together kind of fast. Because when they got together, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What's going on? But, like, at the same time, it was like, when they ended, I'm like, why? Their relationship was cute. Like... He was such a good comedic relief. And the fact that he was barely there for season six, I'm sorry. that Him not being there really, like, even though the show was surrounded by him, or about him with the whole Ghost Rider thing, the fact that he wasn't, like, physically present in majority of the episodes kind of is, like, I know he had other shows. I know he had the whole messing up his face thing. Like, I know. I know. I understand. But as soon as Dylan O'Brien let you knew he wasn't going to be able to be in a lot of the episodes, that should have been your key to wrap it up. There should never been a sixth season B. I'm sorry. My man was in like what three episodes? Sorry to break it to you. As soon as he was like, I'm not available for all these episodes, y'all should have cut the show. No offense to nobody else on the show. Like y'all are wonderful people. Mm, well, some of y'all. But like y'all star cast just left. But that's neither here nor there. Like him in the gone place, forgotten place, wherever the Ghost Rider thing was. So, like, don't get me wrong. I love Dylan O'Brien. I love his acting. Like, it was, like, probably, like, the better part of the season, but it was still boring. Like, it was good to see him. It was good to see him interact with Peter or whatever. Like, the comedic timing, the being scared. Like, you know, it was good. I enjoyed seeing it because it was the better part of that season. But it was still boring. It was still boring. I'm sorry. Like, they should have brought a different mythical creature because these Ghost Riders, they were, like, omnipresent. They had no personality, no nothing. It was like, like we're just snatching when it, it. They had no purpose, no goal, no reason for me to be, like, <gasps> like, none of it. Like, I just, there's, uh, <sighs> honestly, my bad, y'all. That whole forgotten place where Peter was, and no one even knew because, obviously, they forgot him. That would, honestly, if they had sent Malia there, instead of styles it would have been better because one we could have got malia and peter to freaking like get their little father-daughter relationship together because they the, as much as they mentioned it so many freaking times this could have been a real way to get them to sp like it's a fourth like there's no getting out of this like we have to be together we have to figure a way out of this it would have been a good way to build their relationship and two it would have been better to have Styles, scott and lydia as a trio trying to figure out where malia is because one styles would be her connection to her right because this is the man he like, like this is the man who helped her reintegrate society. And if they wanted to set up that whole Scott and Malia thing, it could have been a great reason for Scott to realize, like, oh, I'm kind of feeling this girl in a way, like you know what I'm saying. And then it would have also been a good way to build a relationship between Lydia and Malia. Like they were always like do this whole like at the end of the season buddy buddy thing, but then throughout the season they would kind of be like saying snarky remarks to each other. So I feel like that season could have been a good way to build a relationship between. Malia and the rest of the characters because outside of Styles, Malia didn't really have a relationship with nobody else. 
Like, y'all didn't let her spend enough time with nobody else. So, when it was just Scott, Lydia, and Malia, it was just a weird dynamic because the only person they had in common was Styles, which I truly understand. But, like, Malia in the Forgotten Place would have been a good way to build rapport with everybody else. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all should let me be the show writer. Just saying, okay? And my la my next my last beef with Styles is the whole Lydia ship. Like y'all set this up for since season one. And don't get me wrong, I was really enjoying like after season three, after Void Styles is when they should have got together. After she was helping him and all this stuff. After we found out that that Lydia was his anchor when they did that whole um druid nectar uh nematon tree or whatever. That should have been when they got together. The fact that they didn't get together in season four and the fact that they had this whole thing with Parrish, a grown man and a freaking minor and you think i'm supposed to ship that like they already they already was trying it with pretty little liars and team wolf thought you, you you thought i was gonna do that like you really like paris is a grown man in the in the that's a cop a career as a cop i'm pretty sure he was an ex-military or something and you expect me to root for him with lydia a high schooler i don't care if she was about to graduate or not no that's weird like let it go like they really did all this building like i really enjoyed styles and lydia's friendship their whole detective duo all that stuff just for them not to even give us the payout yeah they kissed and then so what they held some hands and then while malia was like they tried to do that whole parallel of having malia have scott kiss i mean having malia kiss caught to like help repair his eyes the same way Lydia helped Styles with his panic attack but it just wasn't giving it wasn't I'm sorry like y'all really was trying to do all this like oh they belong together and they belong together but there was no building it was you was like look, the fact that y'all realized y'all was coming to the end of the show was why y'all was trying to give us these little tiny moments but it wasn't enough because one Dylan wasn't even in the season like that and two y'all should have been gave it to us a season at the beginning of season four or at the end of season three but you didn't so then the payout was booty. And then y'all was trying to set up Scott and Malia. And it's still, ugh, I could be on this all day. Let me move on. Then we have Lydia. She's the Banshee. In this beginning season one, she's played as this like, she's playing as this like dumb idiot popular girl. When in actuality, she's really smart. She's playing dumb because her boyfriend is a egotistical lame weirdo who apparently can't have a girlfriend and be smarter than him. Whatever. And I really did enjoy her character somewhat. I really did enjoy her character, especially with her dynamic with Allison and, and Styles, for the most part. Other than them two, she didn't really interact with anybody else in a meaningful way. I guess there was Jackson, but their relationship was very toxic. Him putting her hands, his hands on her, I ain't like that at all. Like I'm glad they never got back together after that because that, what would that be teaching people? Hmm. Like, but honestly, something I wish I would have seen is Lydia transform. Like the usual, like when you hear about Banshees and mythical like stories and stuff they're usually humanoids like they look like humans but they are still otherworldly like you would tell they're not human like whether it's stuff on their face a gray hair or a gray skin like you know it would have been cool to see malia transfer as her powers grew because they never really defined her powers so it would have been cool towards the end if we got a kind of like you know transformation or whatever like how they do with scott and the other worlds it would have just been a nice thing to see you know what i'm saying like give us something else like i enjoy the werewolves but give me something else because even Parrish as a hellhound was just a human with sawdust on him that was it a human with sawdust on him like you could have gave a little bit more you could have made parish an actual like hell hound like you could have made him like look like a dog for all i care but i guess it wasn't in the budget mm. um also the fact that her and allison remained friends after lydia kissed scott i was just kind of like wow could not be me as soon as i found out you're kissing somebody i'm interested in and you know i'm interested in him and you have a boyfriend i'm not gonna whoop you because i don't i don't fight y'all but I ain't, I'm gonna dog you out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read you the filth verbally. Because why are you doing that? Why are you so disrespectful? Like I know we don't even know each other like that, but you could have a little bit of decent respect. Like whatever. But their friendship afterwards, when they actually became friends, was actually kind of cute or whatever. Her and Kira never really interacted much, which is an issue. I feel like none of the female characters interacted enough with each other. Like we got the Allison and Lydia scenes, which was cute. But once Allison died, I feel like they should have just kept that going with other characters. But it was never enough. Like they tried to be like all this buddy buddy stuff. But I'm like, I barely see them with each other. Kira mainly interacted with Scott and sometimes Malia. Like, if you were going to do that Malia and Kira stuff, y'all could have at least gave me a little bit more. Y'all wasn't giving me enough. Y'all weren't. 
Like, and then also her being friends with Malia, like they weren't really friends because I knew, I know they were trying to do this whole thing of Malia still being in love with Styles or while she was with Styles. And then even after they broke up, she still had like some feelings for him, right? Because they would like talk about it. Like her mom, the, 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 the coyote, rare coyote lady talked about it, right? So like they would try and make Malia and Lydia these friends and like buddy buddy towards the end of each season when Malia came on. But it's kind of like you're still in love with this man or you're in a, it's either you're in a relationship with this man, Malia, you're either in a relationship with this man or you're in love with this man, depending on which our relationship that is. And Lydia is like secretly in love with him, even though she wants to keep talking to other people. Like, how are you buddy buddy? We cannot be friends if we want the same man. I'm sorry. Like, not to say girls can't get along if they like the same guy. Like, yeah, you can get along. But we're not going to be friends. I'm not going to be arm in arm with you when we like the same man and we want the same man. Especially if my man, me and my man break up and he feeling you now and he don't even think about me and we was in a long-term relationship. Like, excuse you? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, um, I don't think so. Not at all. Not today. Not ever. Nope. But, like, if they were going to do that whole thing, they kind of just should have left Malia once they broke up and Styles was over Malia. They should let Malia be over Styles so that her and Lydia's friendship could have felt a little bit more genuine. But it really never felt genuine because they were always saying snarky comments to each other. They never really had any decent, like, scenes that made me be like, oh, wow, this is a brewing friendship that I want to see pay out. None of that. And that's the issue. Y'all have y'all built Styles and Scott beautifully. Derek and Styles beautifully. Scott and Liam, all of them. Y'all, you built the male relationship so beautifully, like friendships so beautifully. But then the female friendships were kind of like it's not giving. The only thing they have in common is these do du- is these dudes. And then outside of the dudes, they have no reason to hang out with each other. They have like nothing else in common besides their male friends, and that's the problem. Y'all wasn't building enough characterization with the girls outside of the men so it wouldn't give me what it was supposed to give when y'all would make them walk arm in arm with each other like it, I was like okay why am I supposed to care I've never seen them interact in a way that was positive that was positive like oh, hold on y'all my notes moving Ugh. next we have Allison Allison she comes in on season one she's a new kid in school or whatever her and Scott immediately start liking each other when Allison ends up at his job he works at a clinic for a vet or whatever because she hit a dog or whatever and they kind of like hit it off they go on a date and blah 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 blah. like Allison obviously doesn't know that Scott is a werewolf until the end of season um one and the crazy thing about it is her family are werewolf hunters and I understand her reaction to seeing Scott be a werewolf. I completely understand because imagine you're going your whole life without knowing any of this stuff exists and then boom, the guy that you're in love with is a werewolf. But her reaction was ugh, to me, you know, I feel like she should have had an inkling. There's no way you went your entire life with your parents doing all this stuff and you never once picked up a clue. Never once. Like, you're, like don't get me wrong. Girls be wrapped up in themselves, but never that much and never know what your people have going on. No way. And, like, I kind of hate what they would do with Allison. She was very emotional and very whiny, which is a lot. Like, there are people like that, which I don't have a problem with. My problem came in with the fact that she would always denounce the emotional the emotional part of her, which is what I had an issue with. Like, she could still be a bad behind female protagonist that's still in tune with her emotions. She always be like, I'm not like this. I'm not like this. But, baby, you are like that. And it's okay. It's okay to be emotional. You are an emotional human being. Like, you're crying almost every other episode because of something. And that's fine. Just own up to it. You keep saying that's not you, that's not you. But baby, you're crying all the time. And it's okay if that's you. It's okay to cry. Just stop trying to make it seem like it's such a horrible thing to be in tune with your emotions. Baby, you're a, you're a choir. You're a whiner. And that's fine. But stop saying you aren't. Just own it. Like, I wish you would have just owned it. Like, so much. And another issue I have with her character is that... She just didn't feel like she had an actual personality to me outside of her parents and Scott. Like, I, like, 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 when the, in season one, her main thing was, oh, she's oblivious, everyone wants to protect her, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, we don't know who Allison is outside of her family and outside of what you would call it. Like, everything that she does is motivated either by Scott or her family, specifically her father. So I'm like, I really don't know who you are as a person. Like, I don't feel like they developed her character enough for me. I feel like they don't. 
especially when they talk about how she moved a lot as a kid and this that and the third but day one you're already friends with the popular kids and this that and the third and it's hard for you to make friends but boom bada bing you got a man that you like like you with the pot like she didn't have a real purpose outside of scott's out of her relationship with scott and um her family and even when she was done with her relationship with scott she like not immediately but very quickly started like you know feeling isaac which i don't mind they were cute to me they were cute but it's like outside of relationships and outside of her family she doesn't seem to have a personality and that sucks because I feel like she could have been a real good character to see. Like, from damsel in distress to never wanting to, you know, not knowing how to protect herself to this bad behind werewolf hunter who obviously realizes the issue with only hunting werewolves simply because they're werewolves and realizing we could partner up and do better. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, she could have been the one to turn her family's legacy around from something for, to something different. But I digress. You know what I'm saying? Uh, she should have just dated Isaac too before she died like I feel like she should have just went all in with Isaac because the way she was so worried about how Scott was going to feel while Scott was literally like infatuated with Kira is so and I know a lot of girls are like that they're kind of like oh I have a loyalty to so and so even though so and so has moved on sort of kind of but it's like baby just let it go like they should just let her enjoy her time with Isaac especially if we knew she was going to die Maybe that's why they didn't want to do it. They kind of wanted, like, them to be endgame or whatever the heck. Then we have Kira. Kira came around the same time that Allison died. Obviously, she came a little bit before that. And Kira is a kitsune, which is a Japanese thunder fox, I believe. And they live to be, like, a thousand years old. Like, her mother has been alive since, like, Japanese internment camps. Probably longer than that. She, I believe, is, like, 900 years old. And her family's new to town. And I believe her mother moved there because, um, Namaton, the tree that's there. And, you know, she had buried the void thing that I forgot what it's called. The dark kitsune there or whatever. So every kitsune has a dark version of themselves. And, you know, she buried one there after defeating it. And, like, I really enjoyed, I enjoyed her. And the issue I have with Kira's character is that you as fans i don't care if it was you specifically but the fandom as a whole failed her y'all felt her the way y'all were not really me because you know i kind of came into the show late but the way i saw how racist people were to her simply because she wasn't allison and she was dating scott was disgusting are you serious you're mad that a fictional character is dating a new fictional character and it's the fact that people were still so upset even after Allison died. It's like, what do you want that man to do? Never date anyone else? Because I promise you, it don't matter who it was, you guys were going to be upset, which is understandable because this was the first original ship that they, you know, established in the show. But it's the fact that instead of being upset with the, you know, this random new character coming in and taking Scott's attention, it's the fact that y'all decided to be racist to someone. Like, do you know how many, probably um, how many Asian American girls and Asian girls, period, were probably so happy to see themselves represented on screen, especially with how little diversity the show had. And, like, you know, somebody got, to, a, a, a person of color got to see themselves on screen, and you guys decided to be racist to somebody that meant a lot to people. Like, and that's also where the show went wrong. The fact that they let her leave the show and never made her, like, come back. Even in, like, the freaking finale. Like, y'all had Derek come back in the finale. And Derek left, like, what? Roughly around the same time-ish? Like, maybe season... Like, roughly around the same time, in my opinion. And y'all let him come back for the season finale, but not Kira. Like, don't get me wrong. I understand she was with the Skinwalkers or whatever. But I feel like at that point... It had been, like, a good... It was, like, there was a time jump because whatchamacallit was working at the school. Y'all could have easily been, like, at the finale. Kira was, like, oh, I've gotten my powers down a little bit that I can help y'all defeat whatever. Like, it's like they barely even mentioned her. Like, baby, she was still part of the show. She was still a major kid of the show, especially her family dynamic. If there was ever to be a spinoff of Team Wolf, I'm telling you, her and her family, we could start off with her at the Skinwalker area and then, you know. But it's the fact that she didn't know that she was being killed off that I don't like. Why would you not tell somebody they're being killed off a show? Because she was really talking about how she she was excited for season six just to find out on social media that she's being kicked off. And, look, like, y'all really never brought her back. And besides that point, I really enjoy Kira as a person. I like how she, you know, was self-aware in that she could not always control her power, which I really enjoyed. But I also didn't like how she was a little, like, 
I wish she kind of would have been more independent when it came to her relationship with Scott because she was like, what about what Scott would think? Or like, I'm part of Scott's pack and Scott this and Scott that. Like, don't get me wrong. They were cute. They were cute. But I just wanted to hear about Kira. I wanted to know more. I wanted Kira to stand on her own, especially because I felt like her being so enveloped with Scott and like her being never sure of herself played into like the whole Asian stereotype of like having an Asian woman that's so like meek and quiet and doesn't have her own opinion. Like it, like... Even if it wasn't on purpose, it subconsciously plays into that stereotype. And I feel like y'all could have done a better job with portraying her as a bad behind, good behind female protagonist. Like, y'all could have did more with her. Y'all could have showed a strong, independent, Asian-American woman on screen, like, so sure of herself. Even if she would, like... Like, it, I like that she was self-aware, but I wish she would have been more confident, you know what I'm saying? Like, wasn't always so scared all the, time, all the time. Like, I enjoyed her relationship with her mom, but I feel like she should have been, like, more about me. Like, it just, I don't know, subconscious to put into that stereotype, but maybe I'm just looking too deep into it because my, I'm not Asian, so I can never speak for them. And if they feel like I'm doing too much, then y'all y'all got it. I might be doing too much, but if y'all see where I'm coming from, then y'all see where I'm coming from. Yeah. So yeah, I wish she really could have came back. It really should have brought her back. I really enjoyed the whole Kitsune plotline. It got this, you got to see more of a different mythical character. And, you know, it was just, y'all could have introduced a lot more mythical Japanese um, characters with her family. Like, y'all ain't do enough with them. Especially with how, how old her mom is and the wisdom she probably holds and the amount of characters or amount of, um, whatchamacallit she might have seen. Whatever. Then we have Liam, Hayden, and Mason. Um, Liam is the most memorable to me, obviously. He's Scott's first beta, obviously. You know, he didn't bite him on purpose. He was trying to save his life, blah, 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 blah. I really enjoyed Liam. I kind of enjoyed seeing someone who had anger issues, who was prone to violence, compared to Scott, who was this whole passive. I can't kill. I'm not trying to hurt. I want to save everybody versus Liam was like, no, I'm angry AF. And you just turn me into a werewolf which doesn't help anything i really enjoyed that aspect of how they were kind of like the opposite of each other in a way like don't get me wrong liam was still a good kid but like him having anger issues and like i don't care if i'm violent as a human and now a werewolf like it was just good to see but i they i feel like they kind of ruined his character when hayden came into it like and they ruined hayden characters too because she was kind of like you know independent you know didn't really give a crap was about her but then as soon as her and liam got together it was liam liam kiss kiss liam like, and i was like oh my gosh like after the chimera thing i was like what is her purpose here and then mason Mason's comedic relief, he's like, he's like, he was like basically the styles, right? Because they're basically like the, the, the next generation that was supposed to be like after Scott. But Scott never left. And like, I enjoyed them, but I just felt like they weren't that memorable. They were cool, but they weren't that memorable. If you ask me what they were doing after the whole Chimera stuff, I could not tell you. I can't tell you. Like, I honestly don't remember what their purpose was after the whole Chimera thing. I'm remembering something about some white German man and them fighting him, I think. I don't know what that plotline was about. What plotline was I think that was with the Ghost Riders too because I remember the train tracks or something. And that's the most I can remember, y'all. They really served no purpose after the Chimera thing. And I felt like if they were trying to make this like the new generation, the new era that they wanted to, you know, bring in after Scott Styles and stuff, they kind of should have like after what you call it graduated, they kind of should have either made a spinoff with just them or that last season should have been focused around them and nobody else. Like, don't get me wrong, Styles and them could have made like cameos, but it should have been focused on them so that we could actually pay attention because it was like it wasn't fully about them, but then they were there. I don't know. I really don't remember. Like, they could have been good characters, but. It just felt like a cheap knockoff of what we already got. Sorry. Sorry if you actually like them, y'all. I'm so sorry if you like them. It was just... Mm. Also, next person on my list is Peter. Y'all literally could have just gave this man his redemption art. Like, y'all really tried to make him a villain like every other season. Like, my goodness. After, like, okay. After he came back... And him and Derek were in that whole loft area. I think that was, like, season three-ish with the alpha pack and all that stuff. Like, what was that season three? I think that was season two. There's so much going on in this show sometimes. I don't even remember what season is what. But around that, like, whole alpha pack time and stuff like that. And, like, the whole Chimera thing. Like, once we found out he was Lydia. Lydia. Woo. Once we found out he was Malia's father, I felt like 
y'all could have easily just gave him his redemption arc. Like, every other time, y'all kept trying to make him a villain. And I'm like, okay, I'm over this. He done been the villain, like, ten different times. I'm done. Like, like every time y'all keep saying he gonna change, and then he turn right back to be evil. Even when he didn't mean to do it on purpose with the whole um benefactor thing. When he, when he was out of his mind in the, 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 the hospital after being burnt alive. Like, y'all find a way to make this man a villain each and every time. And I'm sick of it. Y'all could have just gave him his redemption arc with his daughter and left it like that. Like, y'all really was building, y'all kept building him up to be a decent character after his evil doings just to break him down again. The fact that y'all gave Theo a full redemption arc and left him good before y'all gave Peter a full redemption arc, are you serious? Are you daft? Like, are you dumb? It's just, y'all could have just left it alone. Like, get it together. And then Derek, my goodness, y'all could not let this man catch a break. Y'all did not let this man catch a break. First, we found out his, you know, family get burnt alive. Then his sister's cut in half by his own uncle. Then his uncle's trying to kill him. Then he kills his own uncle. And then, you know, you couldn't even let him have a happy ending with Braylon. Like, you you know, I'm sorry. Like, they did run. They did. I'm pretty sure they rode, a ride, rode into the sunset together after the whole Mexico t fiasco, which I appreciated. But, like, then it was, like, him running away from the FBI. And I'm like, what are y'all doing? Let this man just relax. Like, it was, like, time after time. Time. they kept messing with this man and I'm just like is he going to catch a break at some point like is he going to catch a break at some point because my god y'all will not let this man breathe <sighs> and then the other problem I had is freaking Kate why did y'all bring her back she was the most pointless person like I feel like that's what Teen Wolf's problem is it had a lot of unnecessary points unnecessary characters to the point that it could not flesh out a well-developed story enough and that was the issue they could not flesh out anything well enough because they had so much going on in one season and that's the problem the fact that they split season three and season six into two different parts because of how much they had going on is the freaking issue like kate should have never came back malia's mother was insignificant like none important it did nothing to malia's development nothing at all Okay, then we had the whole Nazi Germany person while the Ghost Rider thing was happening because it was supposed to, like, give Liam Hayden and them, like, their own spotlight. And it was boring. It did nothing to me. Y'all brought Theo back for what... I, I mean, I kind of like looking at him since Pretty Little Liars. He's a beautiful man. but he And he's also an All-American. But he really did nothing for the plot, you know what I'm saying? Like, and then they tried to, like, do this, like, love-hate thing with him and Liam. And I was just kind of like, I'm not trying to hear that right now. Like, it was just so much going on. Okay? Anyways... Before this video ends up way too long, I'm just gonna cut it off right here. I will say my favorite season is 3B with voice styles. It was well done. Dylan O'Brien executed the heck out of that role. He did what he had to do, okay? He did what he had to do. And then I would also, after that, it would be season one because it's just a classic all-time favorite. Um, And I don't remember the rest of them stuff because they're getting like murky in my brain right now. Ooh, my chill. It's getting murky in my brain. So we're just gonna say the rest of season six, season A and B. I, don't, I just, I just, uh, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. Like, Styles was such a good villain. The way it fleshed out and the way they played on his mom dying. Oh, so good. So good. So, yeah, with that being said, everyone who was racist to Arden Cho can choke on a meatball. The producers who didn't let her know that she was dying, choke on a meatball and chew some rocks. Tyler Posey, leave these producers alone and let the show go. All these people that want to see the seven, let the show go. Just keep rewatching like the rest of us, okay? And let it go. It's done. It's dead. We like let it rest in its nostalgic praise and hierarchy, okay? It's up there with Pretty Little Liars, The Vampire Diaries, Gossip Girl. Leave it where it's at because I promise you, once you reboot it, you're going to hate it. Once they reboot it, you're going to hate it. Leave it alone. And for the for what's his face Jackson, I didn't talk about him because I re like I recently learned he did blackface and Holland Road. I I learned she tried to defend him. I'm pretty sure if I got that wrong, I'm sorry. But if she did defend him, you can chew rocks. Your flip flop can break. You can miss the last stare on the step in your heart. Does that little drop? And for the boy who did um Colton Hayes, is that his name? Who did blackface? You can really just suck it. That's why you're not booked and busy. That's why I don't see you on any projects, and I don't want to see you on any projects. Don't tell me what he's on.
with that being said that was my analysis on everything wrong with teen wolf i did give you guys some things i did like about it and some things i didn't like about it so i hope you guys enjoyed this if there is a show you do want to see let me know in the comment section down below i think i want to do pretty little liars next yeah and i think i might want to do a part two to the vampire diaries should i do a part two to the vampire diaries i don't know you guys should let me know make sure you like comment subscribe and i will see y'all in the next one because i am tired it's like what it's still one in the morning so yeah i'll see y'all bye